Well, good day, guys. Welcome to the Off Grid Cabin. That's the sauna. That's not the cabin. We're at the uh, pond here. I did want to do a little bit of a vlog update sort of thing. We will make our way back here to the pond because we have to feed the fish. We put four fish in there and you guys wanted an update on them. But uh, I'm off to head up in the woods here because I've got a trail camera set up. As you know, I tried to shoot a turkey. That went really, really, really well, didn't it? Well, since I shot at those turkeys, I haven't had much sign of them coming back. And uh, I did want to mention real quick that this video is going to be more of a vlog style because we've got a few things we need to do. And I've got a trail camera I need to check over here. And we've got a little bit of maintenance to do at the old pond. Just check in here because I saw a big snapping turtle over in this creek too. And I hope he doesn't go over to our other pond. And man, are the mosquitoes out now or what? I'm getting pelted in the arms. And pardon me for vlogging my way out here, but there's more than a few things I kind of want to lay out there and get off my chest. I had so many things planned this spring. Have you guys seen any of those things materialize? I think not. The reason is because our politicians are proud of the job that they've done during this pandemic. And I've done a good job of not talking about anything. They're busy patting themselves on the back for having the strictest lockdowns in all of North America. They made camping illegal. So for me to go out and do my survival challenges, I have to actually go out and break the law. And just recently, they made gatherings over, well, I was gonna say over five, but they rescinded that. And they said any gatherings of members outside of your own household is completely illegal. And we've actually had churches who have ignored those guidelines and have conducted church as they would normally and they've received hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of fines and as you know right now we're short on vaccines and they've hung it over our heads that we have to have 70 percent of the population here in ontario before they'll drop any of the orders and then if you look at global vaccination rates there's no country in the world who has a 70 percent vaccination rate so we might be locked down forever and i may have to test whether the film and and television exemption will be provided to me so that i can carry on with my freaking life because to be honest with you i don't know uh does a youtube is youtube and tele film and television can i go camp on crown public lands because i have i follow that exemption i don't know i don't really particularly want to test it in the court of law no above to a million dollars so you tell me do you think that's worth it a million dollar fine for going camping they've made it legal to protest if you're an anti-masker and you don't want to wear a mask outside or inside for that matter and you decide to protest it it's illegal in some of our provinces here in canada i gotta tell you what i'm starting to identify more as an american every single day so that's why I really appreciate you guys and listening to your feedback. I think if you looked up some of our laws and bylaws, you would be surprised too about what we're going through here. Anyway, here's the tarp shelter. We've got a camera here. We've got a few days left in the turkey season. So I did want to check to see what's going on here. Uh, er on the earlier check, I did have a pregnant doe, which is cool. Two pregnant does actually, a coyote and two hens come by. So ever since I did that hunt out here through the blind, the turkeys, <laughs> They never came back, but such is life. This is the area we hunt. It's tough, they're pressured birds. If they get disturbed from an area, they're gone. So I'm gonna pull this card. I'll show you guys what we're seeing right now. And we'll head back to the pond, feed them. And then we're gonna to go to the other pond and see if we can't take care of some of the stuff that I've been aiming to do throughout this lockdown, which is, you know, keep local but still keep busy and still keep doing adventures. So I hope you guys can appreciate that. Well, for anybody who left a comment saying this would make a pretty good greenhouse, <laughs> they weren't wrong. We've got uh, ferns growing up through the floor. So they've managed to find a little crack or crevice to grow through, which is pretty freaking neat. And then uh, of course the blind's looking pretty good, but it's about to lose all the needles. So we'll have to brush this guy back in by the time, you know, the fall season runs around if you wanna get a deer out of here. But uh, look how green up it is. This is full throttle spring now. And uh, mosquitoes are loving the heat and humidity out here. 
but I'm not so much. I really think we're gonna have to put the hammer down on those raccoons this fall, get the traps out here. We got a bunch of dog proofs we can put out. We really gotta thin the population. That's gonna help the turkeys out because the, the raccoons really like to raid the nests. And of course, they're happy to pick off little chicks all they can. So if we can drop that raccoon population down, we can help the other animals here, the more desirable ones. A lot of you guys have been giving me invitations to come up to the US. I really do appreciate the offers, but uh, we can't travel. We can't go across the border. They've locked that up completely. If I go over and come back, I have to spend two weeks in what we call a quarantine hotel at my own expense for two weeks, up to two weeks. If I test negative, I can spend three days. Again, it's about 200 bucks a night. And if I'm test positive, I gotta serve my full two week quarantine in the hotel at my own cost, no matter what circumstances I happen to have. Even if I live by myself, our government of Ontario actually asked for a seven month extension to the emergency measures. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty concerned. I'm pretty frustrated. She just saw a fish jump here in the pond. Grab the fish food, toss them in there. As you know, when we put these four fish in there, they were belly up and white. Oh, these guys are not doing good, dude. This guy's on his last breaths, man. I'm flopping over here. And I was pretty concerned that they would make it, but I let them sit on shore for four, I think it was four or six hours monitoring really closely. I'm happy to say that all four of them still alive today and that's amazing yes the fish were fragile they were rough condition when we put them in there but they actually made it we got only about three feet of water in this pond but it's pretty cold so we're going to fatten these up for about a couple of months and then we're going to eat them that's the goal i want to see how chunky i can get them in just a short period of time so this is completely solar pumping air into the bottom and it bubbles up just over here. So this is really was an experiment. I really didn't think these fish would last super long time because it's considering it being so shallow. So it's kind of like throwing, you know, a few fish in a bathtub and see what happens. Quite a few handfuls left to feed. So the idea is to turn all this feed right directly into fish biomass. And so every time I come out here, I do a bunch of handfuls it actually takes the fish a little bit, a little bit of time to key in and figure out that there's actually food coming. And then once they get going, they'll feed happily for 15, 20 minutes, even half an hour. Just fatten them up real chunky. Well, hopefully the underwater camera, you guys caught a glimpse of them. They've been a lot more active than they have been today. So I don't know if it's probably, it's, it's a continuous number of hot weather days. It's gonna drop down again, but trout are a cold water species. So they like things to be cold. And it's been, it's been tip, un, unusually warm, put it that way. So they're, uh, the string of all these warm days put together probably is putting them down and they're probably just picking feet off the, off the bottom. They did surface a little bit. So you should probably be able to see them, but all four fish made it. So that's the update on this pond. I'm just waiting for Kevin. We're gonna collect the giant turtle trap and we're gonna go over to the other pond because the owner has said there's a, there's a, there's a problem over there. There's a big snapping turtle. And there's also, I think a mink causing problems over there. So we're gonna see if we can't do something about that. Uh, <laughs> that one does not wanna go. Hang on. Oh, there you go. So found Kevin up here just got a load of uh, wood dumped off for part of one of his projects who knows what the heck he's up to but I got the advanced trap here this is the this is the beast that's going to be trapping our predators in the pond I got a little bit of assembly required 
But uh, I need a Kevin with this truck. Cause I don't, I only have, I only have a Toyota Corolla. Excuse me, I'm, I'm not the, I'm not. Maybe I'm just not overcompensating. Maybe that's what it is. I drive a little, reasonable little on gas car, and so this, well, actually would fit in my car at this point, and uh, actually looks like it's cleaned off a little bit. Be before it was all full of raccoon poopies and things like that. So I really want to put it in the back of my car. I'm gonna get this loaded up. We're gonna head over to the other pond. I'll meet you guys over there. So that there's the advanced trap. This will catch anything. It'll catch a catfish, it'll catch a pike, it'll catch a turtle, it'll catch a beaver, it'll catch anything that will swim inside there and trip this little wire back here. And that will actually activate this spring mechanism here and the lock will release at the top here. And there's another piece that goes on the outside of it, which will extend it. So you can actually put, um, you can put live bait. You can put like a live chicken in here. So if you're trying to catch a fox or something, it's in this little vestibule over here, but I don't have that. We don't need it today. But what we do need is a volunteer from the pond in order to bait this, because turtles, especially snapping turtles, they actually love fish, which is why we need to get them out of the pond. And I actually want to complain a little bit more about our government because our government thinks there's a shortage of snapping turtles. So what I would love more, nothing more, is to actually catch one of the snappers out of here and turn it into a meal, because I got to get rid of them anyway. The owner wants them gone because they're eating the fish. But uh, yeah, our government thinks there's a shortage of snapping turtles, yet every lake I go to all throughout Ontario, there's always a snapping turtle. I don't think they put any research or any effort into figuring out how they were endangered or why there weren't that many of them or why they thought there wasn't that many of them. They just said, well, they grow slow and so we shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't disturb them or eat them for any reason whatsoever. And you, trust me, there's not a lot of people in Ontario who actually even bother to eat the snapping turtles. So I'm blabbing on about the fact that we're basically going to try to catch this snapper that lives in the pond and we're going to move into another location to save our trout because they've got to be eating at least one or two every once in a while. And I'm told there's actually a mink in here too. So let's see if we can get a volunteer for our trap. We got our Mr. Tackle Box here. I always like to try to fool around with these trout a little bit because we can afford to. So I'm wondering if I should use one of these giant crankbaits because this is what, this is going to be a catch and keep kind of deal. For ultimate casting, the tournament grade pike or walleye, 100%. The hooks are nice and sharp. Jumper 110 on some six pound trout line here. Oh, beauty! <laughs> Slugged it. Ah, she's gonna be all wrapped up in the all wrapped up in the troubles. But that's okay. That's why we. That's why we're careful what we use when we uh, decide to go for trout. I don't know if I foul hooked that guy or not. <laughs> it looks like I might have fouled him. Maybe he just missed the. He missed the business end of it, but hey, that's how she goes. <laughs> it worked. There you go. Hooks out. Give him one knock. Two knocks. Once you got that fish quiver, you know he's dead. There we go. Okay, let's get the guts. That, that was too much fun. I gotta, I gotta try one more. That was only three, two, three, two, three casts. I don't know what it was. Too easy. Catch one more. Cause that's not enough food for uh, me and Courtney. And Holden doesn't eat fish. Ask me if I'm disappointed. Maybe one day he'll switch. He eats, he eats seaweed. You know those little packages of seaweed? They're the fishiest thing I've ever fished. But he eats those, so there's hope. Try this little minnow, minnow spin. It's called, it's a little spinner bait. Should work. You guys use that code Beardsman for your mystery tackle box. Put that code below. If you're looking to build up your tackle box, it's a good way because uh, every month you're going to get a bunch of stuff, a bunch of cool stuff. It's always a mystery. There we go. Oh, we like that one. I like that one. Oh, I wasn't sure that was the, was that the first cast? Oh, good fish. Oh, look at that drag sing. 
Nice. Now we got to reef them up. Should have a net here, but we don't. There we go. We got them. Fish number two. Just got to change the bait up, guys. They're smart. They watch their buddy get caught, and they're like, I don't want to get caught too. It's another good size one. This is the second year on these uh, trout in this pond. You can see how well they did. These came as like five, six inches, so they've doubled in size, and they're going to double in size again. That's a nice rainbow. And these things fight strong too because they're, they're, they're fed well with the pellets. We'll toss a few pellets in there at the end. Let's get this unhooked. We'll get the guts out and then we can uh, get to catching a turtle. Look at that. Look at that rainbow. Beauty. There we go. One shot deal. All the way. And then we'll have something to hook into the, the trap. We can hook the gills here in the trap and let that dangle in the water. And that'll be a really good attractant for the turtle. We got Kevin here from Modern Self Reliance. He's going to be my cameraman because there's a lot of things to take care of. And you have fish hands. Have fish hands now. Smells like success. All I smell is bug spray. Because <laughs> you're covered in I don't have any bug spray and I'm getting eaten alive. Well, it's, it's because I've got enough of it on. <laughs> and they're staying away from me. That's right. All right, here. You take the camera. So I want to show people how this thing works. So the mechanism here is basically this wire and it hangs up to the trip up top. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the guts and we're just going to loop it through this and we're going to hang it down below. A turtle has a really, really good sense of taste or smell, whatever you want to call it. And they'll be attracted to dead anything from like miles and miles away. And I've gone to back lakes and I've done this too, where you just like throw your leftover remains just in the bottom of the lake and they'll come in within like a couple hours and grab it. The turtle comes in here, it's going to grab the food that's suspended on here and that door is going to drop and uh, you can catch all kinds of animals in here but I managed to catch a bunch of mostly raccoons because <laughs> this happens to be the most common thing that we have around here is raccoons. I tried to catch a coyote in it but they're they're just way too smart for that kind of that nonsense. So just thread it up through the gill plate there. That's all we need. And the turtle grabs there. He's going to trip the trip the wire and we're going to catch ourselves a turtle and then we can relocate it because Ontario and Canada is not really a free nation anymore. So this is a mixture, obviously this vlog, a little bit of me back talking on Canada and identifying as a Texan or a Floridian. So if you guys want to adopt me, let me know. Oh, this is heavy. Oh. I don't know where we should set it, maybe just right here. It looks a little slimy. What does it taste like? Giardia. Now the question is, can we drop it in the water without setting it off or do I got to go in the duck poo? <laughs> Set this. Is this a two-man job? Probably. <laughs> kind of bottom we got here. It's not. Oh, it's goose poopy. You guys think I could just step on this dock, right? <laughs> oh. Hey, how are you going to do this? I'm going to hand it to you. Cut it. Why did you go in the water? Oh, don't trip it. Watch the trip. Put my finger out there. Hold it down. <laughs> wow, that's good swimming water right there. Just cleaning out my freezer. Had carp season right now. And I actually have uh, some leftover carp <laughs> that I had intended to eat, but there's no way in heck I'm eating this stuff now. So we're going to throw it in the back just for a little bit of insurance there. I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to catch a trout even. You know my luck this year. So that's just at the front of the trap. So that should entice them to come in. This is, uh, this is Rick the owner's mink box. And so we're going to put some food down in there. Put some fish. Carp down in the bottom. And then we got just a little 120 here. And get this thing opened then that's going to fit in the door opening here and so if anything comes in whammo we're going to get them oh i don't want to be catching any skunks or raccoons or pet cats keep it having to be by so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on the floating dock over here and then that way the only thing that can really get there is an aquatic animal. So if it'll have to swim up and 
jump on top and run across and grab it. As long as this trap doesn't set off, I'll be very happy. Okay. Okay. That's kind of flat there. And then uh, we're gonna tie this off. I just found a, I don't have any trap wire with me, so we got this thing. We can tie it off to here. String there. Here we go. We'll see if that works. We'll check back in. Oh, I just I just about forgot. I wanted to set the camera up too here. So we got the aqua view set up and it's got it's oriented into the trap here on a little tripod. It's kind of jerry-rigged, it's not you know nothing fancy here. Tripod with the aqua view fashioned on the leg, aimed up in there. So hopefully we'll see that turtle swim up there and we'll see the money shot where the, the door clamps shut on it. So that's something we'll look forward to. We have a limited amount of battery power. It's not gonna be action based on movement or anything like that. So when we're out of record time, and we're out of battery power, this aqua view is just gonna shut off. It's just gonna leave it on the dock and let it do the work for us. So we'll, uh, we will set this off before we go. I don't know how many hours it has to record. It looks like it's got three hours. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully we're successful and get rid of some of our pond predators. Join the rain. It's been like 50 years since it's taken this long to rain, so I'm enjoying the rain. I hope the pollen gets cleared out. As you can see, these fish are doing super good. They're super healthy. These fish are super active. It's awesome to see these come up and rise for food like that. One of the best things I ever did was just to get a pond started. And uh, not having any property on my own, it's been nice to have sponsors check in, like Linden Trout Hatchery for supplying the fish. And then, of course, they got sponsors with property, too. It's like, hey, you want to put free fish in my pond? Go for it. Just take a look at this trap, see what's going on. And it actually looks like it's not been tripped. But as you can see, it hasn't been deployed. I actually came and pulled the camera here a second ago, uh, just to get it out of the rain. But uh, <clears throat> I can check the footage and see if something kind of snuck up to it and then decided that it was not was looking too suspicious to actually go in there. But my experience, if I set a turtle trap or I leave any kind of anything around as far as edibles for a turtle, a turtle will come in and grab it. So I'm guessing that maybe the turtle that lived here doesn't, doesn't live here anymore. Although Rick, the owner, has seen them nesting up over on the shore here. So who knows? Maybe it's a little too cold still for them to be active, but I'll let this run a little bit longer and I'll give you guys an update maybe in another video. We'll see, I'll check back tomorrow, but uh, as far as timelines go, I wanna put this video out on Friday because that's what I do every Friday. So I'll rebait this and actually the mink trap over here is empty as well and the bait is still there. So nothing like snuck in there and didn't grab it. So we'll leave those two set. Got another chunk of carp jammed in there. I finally got it to shove through the slats there. And another thought I had real quick is that uh, maybe the turtle's not hungry. And <laughs> it's just filled up with trout. Maybe once it digests a trout, it'll be hungry enough to come in for another bite to eat. Like I said, our government's not very good right now. And uh, they're kind of pinning me down. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, they're going to let me go camping and do some fun adventures and do more survival type stuff. So see you guys in the next one. Makes them grow fast. It's high quality pellet feed. I think it's made up from like ground up fish they don't use anymore. It smells like dog food. Look at them go! I love that stuff. There you go, fatten them up. Some delicious trout.